Hi everyone, welcome back to As We Speak. Following on from our discussion about racism and biases with Stephanie Pujol and Liza Tate Bailey, now that we've understood these different uh, nuances, these different biases, we talk about how we can possibly cut it at the roots and raise a new generation of essentially anti-racist children. Uh, thank you guys. Um, so, you know, I have two young kids and when my little one was even younger, like five and six, you know, they already started talking about the color of their skin and the playgrounds. Uh, you know, my, my son has come up to me going, oh, you know, my friend says I'm so brown and he's so white or he's so Chinese or his eyes are twitchy. Um, how do you deal with this? And you know how we say, oh, the world is one or religions are one, it's the same God. Do you do the same? I mean, do you take a colorblind approach? What should you be doing? I definitely don't think we should be taking a color blindness approach. Um, and yeah, just to say that I think, you know, thinking about the, my own way of being brought up, um, one of the things I really appreciated my mom doing was talking about difference, right? And actually I grew up um, my, with my mom working with people um, who have disabilities and she never shied away from talking about um, their disabilities and, you know, but like not in a judgmental way, but in a like, oh, some people have, you know, X, Y, Z. And so I think we think about that in lots of different ways. Um, but yeah, like it's just important to acknowledge it and acknowledge that there are kind of connotations to that. So I do have children and um, they've mostly grown up in the UAE, but I think, and so my children are, I'm half Greek and their father is French. So they're a, a mixture of, of a few different cultures, but, but actually they've been brought up as English, but living in the Middle East. Um, I think it's really important to address culture and to embrace your culture. So as a half Greek person, I was, I was, I remember being told by my mother one day when I came downstairs as a child to do my hair differently because I looked too Greek. Uh, but in the same breath, if somebody would upset me at my school, she would say, you shouldn't hang around with the English girls, they're, they're mean. So I think it's really important to, to teach children to be proud of their culture, to embrace their culture. The wrong thing to do is be colorblind about it. I think it's really important to educate them that this is who they are, they should be proud of who they are, and that they may this might get pointed out and it's okay to acknowledge a difference as well. You don't need to be quiet about it. When they're making acknowledgement about somebody's skin color, it's not necessarily coming from a bad place. They're just noticing that somebody looks different to them. And you know, children, they, they say what they think and they say it as soon as they think it and can't quieten them, but you can explain appropriate ways of talking about things and, and encouraging some interest in other people's cultures to, to encourage them to read books where, you know, historically, in films and in TV, the role models are white. The good guys are white. And, encouraging, and, and, and the bad guys are, 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 are black or people of color. So encouraging them to watch programs that portray good qualities in people of, you know, in, in people of color that they can aspire to. So they're not only looking at white people as good, black people as bad. Yeah, so Ibram X. Kendi has written a kid's book um, called The Anti-Racist Baby. And then he's written an adaptation. I think someone else has adapted his book stamped about kind of the history of race in the US for young adults. And so, you know, there are a ton of books. When I was a teenager, reading Noughts and Crosses was a really fundamental experience for me um, because uh, Noughts and Crosses, Mallory Blackman, she's just the most amazing person. Um, and she flipped the social structure such that Crosses are black people and they have all the power and then Noughts are white and they don't. And then she uses that to show so for example there's a scene where um uh Noor is given a plaster and it's really dark brown and it really stands out on their skin and like I'd never thought about plasters before you know and the fact that they match my skin if you can travel and if you can take your kids to see the world and experience different cultures I mean that's just just an amazing amazing privilege if you if you can do it if you're in a position to and I think we're so well placed here with all the internationalism and the international schools and all of that you know, so that's, that's really good. But also, interestingly, you say that because my, my children obviously went to school here and they, they, really, they really don't notice that people are, I think they, they do now, they're 16, but at a younger age, they really didn't notice. And while that's lovely and, and, and innocent, you know, we do owe it to 
society to acknowledge that people are different and they do have different experiences and we do need to make accommodations yes. to give people the privilege that we have automatically just by being here. But you know, as, as you said, Stephanie, about your mum and the whole thing about the, the eyebrows and the hair, these colours, yeah, they start at home. They're so random, you know, and sometimes culturally, it's very hard to tell, like, for example, an older family, don't phrase something a certain way. Don't talk to my child a certain way. Don't, because it's not coming from a place of malice. It's not coming, uh, you know, for example, in India, the one thing is, you know, when you go on the beach and you put sunblock don't you know make sure you put your sunblock you're gonna get really tanned you know you're gonna get really dark um you know we we have this sort of we still suffer from a sort of colonial mentality complex you know um that's my culture in the in in our parents and our grandparents lives white was good black was bad white white meant privilege black meant um, being pushed to one side i mean my mother wouldn't put sun, would would not go in the sun either for the same reason and i think it a place of the whiter the, the whiter you are the more advantages you're going to have ongoingly but particularly at the moment it does talk about colorism right and, and that's why there's a whole industry of skin lining greens um because yeah there is like within racism it's not as simple as saying or you know like it's just racism and that's it like there is also colorism within within that and people with darker skin yeah have less job opportunity you know like uh, considered less attractive like we we it, it's all underpinned by a framework of European beauty ideals. And I think you mentioned, you know, a colonial mindset. Yeah. I also think it's quite difficult. I mean, my father, definitely, he's 75. He's, you know, he's as British as they come, as English as they come. Um, and he is not going to change his views. He just isn't. Um, so I feel like the best I can do is share my views and I get quite cross and we, it's been quite difficult to have polite conversations because I feel very sort of um, defensive and, um, and, and upset and it offends me to hear the way he talks about people. Um, and and I, I don't think I'm ever going to change his opinion. And I think accepting that is something that I find really difficult doing because I, I want everyone to get it. But then also I have been amazed that I moved for undergrad um, when I was 20 in 2013. And I've been amazed at how attitudes have changed in my family. For example, like towards people who are Muslim um, in those years, but it took me a really long time to realize that. And I don't know that that was actually me like kind of badgering them or belligering them. It was actually just kind of talking frankly about my friends and my life and living in Abu Dhabi. And then, and then, yeah. And then seeing kind of how their attitudes changed and being like, oh, wow. Like I, you know, I wasn't, I didn't realize that that they would change their opinions quite so dramatically. But it didn't happen overnight, obviously. It was a long process. Any advice that you can give, constructive advice that you can give us parents who are raising children today, especially in these tumultuous times? Definitely to teach, teach children to notice the differences um, and to value the differences. Trying to make sure that you bring uh, stories and TV um, and, and whatever um, sort of social media that has portrays people of colour in a good, positive light. But there's no doubt that like kids are already learning this really young, so you have to start really young to, to give them the skills to critically interrogate that. Anything you guys would want to add to this conversation? Is there anything you feel that you really want to add that you think is really important and that needs to be heard? Um, yeah, I think, you know, there are so many resources out there. I think it's really important to talk about the burden that are, is often placed on people of colour. Um, particularly, you know, we started at this saying we're white women. Like, it's not anyone's responsibility to educate me. I have to take the impetus and go and buy the books and, you know, and then also use that to self-reflect. So it's one thing like learning the knowledge, but if you're not going to put in the effort to say, you know, what thoughts am I having? Like, sometimes I shock myself with my thoughts and then I'm like, Oh, that was really prejudiced. I, I feel very strongly that uh, I am an ally. I want to be an ally. I want to help other people become allies. I think it's very difficult for a lot of people to find their voice. Um, and it's easier to sit quietly and, you know, I think like Obama said, be woke from the sofa. You know, stand up and speak and take on the struggle as if it's your own. And, um, and, and, and also, think, you know, transfer your privilege to those who don't have it. Okay, well, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for being here. Guys, I hope all of this has helped. Uh, we're discussing some very sensitive issues. So 
Uh, if you do have any comments, please feel free to, to add them in the section below. Please comment, share, like, subscribe. A big thank you to both of you. Thank you for watching everyone and see you next week.